Do Ra 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 episodes 13 and 14, and it looks like we have a new opening theme song. I really liked that song, actually. <laughs> I mean, the, the sequence wasn't all that interesting, but the song was really good. Am I slanted? I think I'm slanted. Okay. So I guess six months have passed since the last episode. News about this headless rider has spread all over the world. Seiji and Mika are at school, and they're just like way into the public display of affection. And he's like, I know you're not really the head, but I still... <sighs> Kida is still putting the moves on uh, Sonohara. And, um... What's his face? Oh my god, what's his name? Mikado. <laughs> Mikado is like, leave her alone! But then she gets all introspective and she's walking to school and there's the creepy teacher again. And these days, Selty is riding around a lot more often. And the police seem to be after her these days. And this one guy who was featured in the opening theme song, who hasn't been in the previous 12 episodes, um, he, he's, I think, a police officer, and he's like, you're... I, I'm not afraid of you, basically, and I'm gonna stand up to you, and I don't have issue with, with this matchup. So Selty goes home, and she hugs Shinra, and he's all like, wow, it's so happy to see you, but then he realizes that she's upset. And she explains how the police are getting super intense these days. So there's this guy, Kuzuhara Kinosuke, who's the head of it, and he's... He's kind of notorious for being a little intense. And Shinra says that his dad is coming, and um, he wants Selty to go meet with him. So then we get to see Dad, and he's wearing a gas mask, and people are trying to bully him, but he will not... He will not allow that. And he, he sort of started coming off being really badass, but then, like, then he kind of yields and becomes wicked wimpy. And then he reveals that the only reason he was being badass is because he saw Selty, so he's like, Selty, save me! And when these idiots try to bully her, she engulfs them with scary darkness. Isaiah has gone out to meet with, uh, Simon. I think they just had an exchange in Russian. That is interesting. Meanwhile, back to Sonohara. Um, the two boys are talking about how, oh, she's so cute and so wonderful and everything's good about her, and she's like, oh. But of course, she's also thinking about how she doesn't she doesn't really know what her place is right now because it used to just be to hang out with Mika and make her look better. But now that Mika is obsessed with Seiji, it's kind of like, nah, what do I do? So Kita's like, let's go hit on girls! And then he runs off, leaving um, the two of them to talk. But I think Kita's trying to set the two of them up. And then he's looking around, walking by himself, and he realizes that a lot of people in this area are wearing the yellow scarves. So Sonohara eventually leaves and walks home alone, because she's thinking about Mika, and she can't really tell the difference between friendship and love, and she's a little confused. So then Mikado's walking alone, and he's sad. And Kida's interacting with the scarves, and he's like, no, I'm, I'm not part of that world anymore. Mikado goes home, and he talks online with his friends, and they're talking about how, like, oh, you have to be careful about the police. And while this is happening, Sonohara is being bullied by those three girls. Online conversation people have now, they now have their correct voices. Before, I think they were using decoy voices whenever they were having their conversations um, so that we wouldn't know exactly who they are right away, but now I think that they have their actual voices. It looks like something's going to happen with Sonohara in about a couple of seconds. Since this is what I asked for, I wanted more from her. And I'm a little worried now. Wait, no, she might just be being rescued by the slasher? And the slasher person does have access to their little chat room. Um, but they just think that she's a spammer. So then the slasher slashes the three bullies. That's the end of that episode, and there is a new ending theme song too. But it's kind of the same style as the one before with everybody's images just kind of like going by. Mikado is in the message room and he hears about, um, how a bunch of first year girls were slashed. And then Isaiah sends a personal message all like, oh, don't worry, don't worry. It's not your girlfriend, don't worry. And he's like, oh. So the two of them know who the other is, but they don't know that the third person is Selty, and she doesn't know that um, they are the other two people. And as soon as they all leave the chat room, the slasher comes back in and spams. And the slasher is always spamming about mother. <sighs> I don't know. I need more info. So now we're at home with the, um, the Shinya family. Shinra family. So I'm getting the feeling that Shinra and his dad don't really get along so well. <laughs> and dad notices like, hey, are you two together? I mean, I knew my son is weird enough to fall in love with you, but I didn't realize that you would reciprocate his feelings. 
but dad doesn't approve because on account of the fact that she's a mythological being. But then he eventually gets over it. He's actually got over it really quickly and was like, fine, but you have to call me dad. And they're like, well, oh, shut up. Then he just kind of casually accidentally gives away the fact that he's the one who stole her head. So they're like, explain. And he's like, okay, I'll explain. But so he doesn't have to explain, he just runs away. And so Selfie jumps on her bike to chase after him and Shinra's just kind of standing there like, okay. But it turns out dad didn't even leave. He comes back in and Shinra's still just kind of standing there like, ah. Selfie stumbles across Mikado while she's looking for the dad. And he's like, I heard some rumors that the slasher is part of the dollars, but I can't believe it's true. So Selty agrees to look into the slasher incidents. So she goes to talk to Shizuo, hoping he has some information. And when she admits that she's actually encountered the slasher once before, Shizuo's like, I will to kill him for that! Once you find all the information about the slasher, Come and get me, and I will kill him. So Selty goes off to talk to Isaiah, which is the reason why she couldn't bring Shizuo along, because as we know, Shizuo and Isaiah don't get along. <laughs> and Isaiah just kind of ends up teasing her about her relationship with Shinra, and he's like, what if another one of you comes along and seduces him? What then? And she's like, I've become super jealous, and this just makes Isaiah laugh, because she's becoming kind of human. She admits that she's not really thinking so much about getting her head back anymore these days. Then Isaiah starts talking about a sword called Saika, which is in uh, Ikebukuro. Apparently it's a sword that comes to life and takes control of humans' minds. And Saika is actually the, um, the username of the person who keeps spamming the message board. Shinra is weirdly knowledgeable and evasive about this subject. Isaiah shows up to work, and Shinra's dad has a gun to Namie. Oh, but it was just a fake gun, but he used it to get inside the building. So Isaiah's trying to do something with the Valkyrie and, like, awaken it or something. It's, it's a little confusing what Isaiah's doing, as usual. <laughs> Dad wants to create some kind of conflict with the head. Um, and he's asking Isaiah to take care of that, and Isaiah's like, I planned on doing that anyway. Oh, the creepy teacher is sexually harassing Sonohara again, and re she's rescued by Kida, thankfully. And he brings up a girl in the past who was supposedly being sexually harassed by that teacher, and the teacher, like, becomes weirdly angry about it. So Kida's talking to Sonohara, and he's like, I'm pretty sure Mikado loves you, so I'm gonna make sure that happens. I'm gonna protect the two of you and your relationship. So they hang out with each other for a little while, then they all split up to go about their business. Oh, Kida goes to visit that girl in the hospital who may or may not be his girlfriend. Then Shinra goes to Selty and explains that his dad used to have the Saika sword. And it's true that the sword can possess people. And he used that sword to steal her head. And he's like, I thought I shouldn't say anything because it seemed like you were, you know, getting by without your head. But I, I couldn't help myself. And she's like, oh, I need to think about this. And as the episode ends, it's like someone's attacking Sonohara with a knife, but it's not the slasher, it's just a guy with a knife, it looks like. Oh, gee whiz. Alright, those two episodes are over. <gasps> okay, a little confusing, but I get it. I'll see you guys again soon when I review the next group of episodes, which should be episodes 15 through 22. Bye!